What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Truth Life Podcast. Today we got a very special guest. I call him a Louisiana legend where we from. His name is Darius Dunn. And he was so grateful to uh, get on our podcast today and share some of his experience with us. What's up, Liz Darius? Yo, what's good, my guy? Thank Appreciate you. you for having me, man. What's good with you? Appreciate you more, man. Just uh, give the people a little introduction, a little background so they can get familiar with who you are. Oh, uh, man. Lace Dairy is done. You know, Monroe, Louisiana kid from the small Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, went to a little private uh, Christian it's, uh, class C high school. Left there. I went to Baylor. Did four years at Baylor. You know, uh, had a nice career at Baylor. Baylor's all-time leading scorer. Was the Big 12 all-time leading scorer, but Buddy Hill, you know, he came and topped that. So, yeah, Buddy man. holding that down right now. Yeah, Been playing, what, nine years overseas right now, man. Still going. So, that's a little bit, a little quick little description about me. Gotcha. And how do you how do you pronounce your uh, high school? Excelsior? Excelsior, right, right. You right. pronounce it good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't, uh, isn't Wofford, because that's where your little brother went to school at, right? Yeah, my little brother went there, but his last year he also switched and went to uh, Wiseman High School. Wiseman, yeah, Wiseman. My, yeah, my, my last year they uh, they shut down after I thought left, and he went to uh, he went to Wiseman. So Wiseman is in Monroe. Wiseman is in Monroe, also right, probably like two minutes from Excelsior, right up the strip. How did they let you? How did Wiseman let you get away with that? <laughs> Man, I don't know how how Wiseman uh pull that off, brother. Like I say, due to the school shutting down, you know what I'm saying? They really. They really ain't have too many, too, too many more options, you know, too many ways to do it. So it went pretty much nothing they can do. So I got you. Okay. Good. What class was the uh, Excelsior? Was it a single A? Yeah, we, we were class C. Oh, you were class C. But, but we, yeah, but we were running like we were class A, though. Oh yeah, for sure, bro. Like <laughs> I said, where I'm from, you like a legend. You know the um, the best player where we from was Tweety. Tweety, so, that's my guy. Whenever you, whenever you heard Louisiana basketball for us down there, it was DJ Augustine, Tweety, Lace Darius Dunn. You know what I'm saying? So, right, right, right. So we, we heard about them battles all the time. And I ain't never really got to see you play in person. You know, we'll just see the numbers like, this dude keep putting up 30, man. Who is this dude? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we from, how tall were you in high school? Like 6'4", six, 6'6", six, six, something like that? In school, yeah, 6'4", yeah. See, well, I was six four in high school too, but I was a sinner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> oh they got you down low with it. <laughs> bro, I was the tallest dude on the team. You know, everybody's small. Louisiana is more like a football state, I would say. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't too much big. Right, dude. right. But um, yeah, man, it's just I'm like I said, man, it's a I'm excited to have you on because Dudes, when dudes from where I'm from see you on, they'd be like, oh, that's the dude that used to be putting up the numbers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like you say, my guy Tweety, man, that's my guy to this day. And I used to always, you know, I used to keep up with him during them high school days. And I used to hear them numbers coming up the highway. So I had to shoot some numbers back up the highway. So we was like going back and forth with it. So, right, right. yeah, man, man, Tweety, that's my guy, man. He kept me, he kept me pretty hyped during them high school days because he was, he was dropping it off down up for sure, man. He was small with it though. See, I was six four. He was six four with it. He was still yeah. going crazy. Bro, That's my guy, man. Seventh grade, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, who was on your team at Baylor? I know a couple of guys from Baylor. Um, I know Walton was Walton on your team at the time, or was that he? He was after you, AJ Walton. Who that? AJ Walton. I played two years with AJ. That's my young guy. He played. He played the pawn guard spot for me. Okay, so y'all was y'all was y'all was loaded. Yeah. Um, how was yeah, it playing? Like AJ, out? that's my guy, man. AJ, he living that Polish life right now, man. Right, right. He played with my guy this season. Uh, quick question, bro. How was it going from Class C to the Big Twelve? And you didn't just went to the Big Twelve; you dominated the Big Twelve. So how it go from dominating? Like I said, man, Louisiana basketball. You know, you got your teams, but it's not like a a big pile of like you get a good. 20 teams and then you get 20, 20 trash teams. So how it go from not really facing that type of competition night in and night out to going to the Big 12 and just dominating? That was a, yeah, that was a huge jump, right? Just sound <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so yeah, going from, uh, like you say, going from there, man, Class C, 
and going up. It was a big jump for sure. It was a big, big jump for sure, man. But you just gotta have that, you know, you gotta have that 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 confidence. You gotta have that competitiveness to, to be able, you know, to play on any level. And that's how I always was coming up. Like it wasn't always about no class C school with me. Cause like I said, when we played up against even the the, the four A and the five A, we, we were handing our ears to them boys. You know what I'm saying? So it was just all about the competitiveness, man, and just just doing what I do, you know. All right. That's what this, this podcast is about. Like I started this brand called Truth. And it's basically just instilling self-confidence and a mental approach because like coming from Louisiana, I went to a two-way school and we always had to, we didn't look at five-way school like there was five-way. We look at them like, oh, we finna eat. We finna, like I know they recruiting them, so we finna steal their scouts. You know what I'm saying? So that's good, man. I love we, to hear that, bro. We trying to munch off them bars, man, for sure. Trying Anybody to munch who, who, who labeled higher than us, man, it ain't nothing but the opportunity to eat, man. So we, we was out for any opportunity to eat, man. We were for it. <laughs> exactly. You know what for I'm saying? For real. And I noticed the mentality that kind of changed when I went back home. It's more buddy-buddy. It's like we was buddy-buddy, but it was business first. It was like, I'm coming here to take your spot, and then we could joke and stuff after. But nowadays, it's so friendly. The competitive... It's, I feel like it's leaving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, were you feel like you were born with that? Somebody taught you that competitive spirit, or was for me it was my it was like my OGs, my guys around the neighborhood. They didn't they beat me up, bro. <laughs> there was like no crying. You know what I'm saying? How was it for you? We having that. The, <laughs> the OGs I came around like we 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 weren't having that, bro. We weren't having it. Like you say, back in our days, man, we was all about that. It was all about that cut and all about, you know, just trying to ball, trying to grind, trying to hoop. And right now, like you said, it's a di different generation coming up, man. They got, they kind of like switched the, switched the touch around. Now they want to, like you said, they want to be friendly. They don't really want to get in the lab and hoop. They think everything's going to fall in their hands type. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just a different generation, man. They got it, they got it kind of, kind of backwards right now compared to how we had it coming up and how we were just all like grinding. You know what I'm saying? And still to this day, we still just, just live like it, just grind. So. It was different, man. But like you said, OGs coming up in the, you know, in the hood in the trenches, they most definitely put that toughness in you. So that's that that's why it's another reason why it wasn't it wasn't nothing to go from class C and play with them, play with them big twelve guys, you know, all, all the talent that came up through there. It was a breeze. So yeah, them OGs, man, they got it up out of me. So it was it, it was all good. To this day, I'm still carrying it with me. <laughs> got you, man. Speaking of this day, man, you've been overseas for like um nine, ten years, right? Yeah, ninth. I just finished my ninth. Okay, ninth season. And uh, I see you played in uh, Israel, Portugal. Come, you kind of been a little glow trotter. Just tell us about going from college to playing overseas, coming from Louisiana, from Monroe, to going to Waco, to going to Europe and all over the world. How's that experience been for you so far? Jump out the jump, out the jump, jump out the jump for a kid like me, bro. You know, yeah. jump out the jump, bro. Uh, by the grace of God, uh, coming from where I come from, Monroe, like you said, to go to Waco, then to leave Waco, to go to Europe and travel all over the globe, you know, just chasing my dream. It was it was crazy. It was crazy, man. Leaving college, going to play overseas, like, first of all, you're going to a whole nother environment. You're going to the other side of the world. You ain't got no, you're going to have fans, but you ain't got family fans. You ain't got your people, you know, so it's really just a different type of level that you got to tap into and really be really be ready for it, man, because it's, uh, it's a task. Most definitely a task, bro, like going over there, being gone that long, depending on if you got your family or you don't got your family, you know what I'm saying? You just over there kicking it, you grinding it out. But uh, like I said, it was, a, it, was, it, was a, it was a great experience for me, bro, and to this day, man, I love everything that I done traveled, everything I done did in Europe. Like I really like, still to this day, like can't believe some of the things that I do over there or some of the spots I go hit, like it's crazy. So. Uh, it was a big jump for me, man. Like you say, coming from coming from Baylor and going to play across the across the world, you know, traveling. Ain't got right. nobody, man. It was a big hurdle for me, but it all it all paid out. It all paid out. Gotcha. What you like the most about playing in Europe, man? The most about being in Europe, bro, is just hooping and getting paid. That's it. Still doing what I love to do. You know, getting paid for being able to, you know, put food on the table, you know, keep a roof, you know, keep the little Keep the little life going, but other than that, man, like I say, just chasing the dream, bro. Still doing what I doing what I love to do. God keep gracing me, and man, I'm gonna keep bouncing that thing till it go flat. So, gotcha. what's what it is? I, I just be trying to give guys this perspective because they see me, 
and I put everything on camera. I record everything. So it looks like I'm just living, I'm living the life over here. And I am to a certain extent. <laughs> but um, what, right. you, what you hate the most about playing in Europe, bro? What I hate the most about playing in Europe? Uh, just depending on where you at, bro. All that damn traveling, bro. Just depending on oh. where you're. Like I said, I was in Poland one time. Then we taking fourteen hour bus rides. Oh, we no. taking ten hour bus rides. Like it was crazy, snowing, cold as shit. Yeah, that's the like you know, like so if you somewhere like that, bro, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. And I hate the fucking cold. So we traveling. Yeah. I'm talking about all night on the bus, dog. <laughs> yeah. Bro. I said I ain't never going back to Poland. <laughs> man, that's what I was telling you. But that's about the only thing. Other than that, man, man, Europe is Europe. Europe been great to me, bro been great god oh my god yeah bro <laughs> that's what it's like in france we take the train <laughs> if we go all the way down south but if we don't go all the way down south bro we busting it and as soon as we get off the bus we're going straight to practice bro it's like straight to the gym <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and i'll be like man i don't i'll be like bro i don't even see how this makes sense you feel what i'm saying but that's their way of doing it bro that's their way of doing it <laughs> Yes, sir. Give me yeah, one thing. That's about it. Other than that, that's about it. Give me one thing you wish you would have known before you started playing overseas. One thing I wish I could have known. Uh, for one, man, I really, I really wish I would have just knew, like, just going into how really like the the overseas guys, like how they play and their approach to the game. You know, you've been around, you know, some girls, some guys play dirty, da 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 da, da like you get real crazy. You know, right. me being a high head coming in, I'm not used to that. I'm not going for none of that. So when I came in, you know, I always had a problem with that. Like, you know, leave, leave my leads and take for five, but I'm always going out. They like, yo, these, this, this, these guys mentality, this is how they play. So I'm like, ain't nobody never hit me to that. So it took me a little while to get a hold of that. And then another thing, I wish I could have changed the change the damn the damn traveling rule, man. That jab step and putting that rock down. Oh. It took me a while to get a hold of that. So I'm so, like, yo. So they call it travel every time I get that journey. Yo, I'm like, yo. I'm like yeah. this shit ain't travel where I'm from. They like, yo, you're not in America no more, fam. So, so I, had, I, I I had to get that down pat. And other than that, man, like I say, pretty much it was just it was just smooth sailing, man. Everything else was pretty much all on me, man. I was I was easy going with it, so it was cool. I'm gonna say it like this, bro. I would say maybe my first four years in Europe, bro. Every league I played in, I led the league in travels. Every league. <laughs> Every league. I would average like I would average three turnovers a game. I'll be like one of the top scorers, rebounders, top assist man, but I would always be topping a, a turnovers. Two of them was travels, bro. Like <laughs> it wasn't like I was out there just throwing the ball you away or nothing. Down, bro. Man, it's just it's awkward. You feel even to this day, I just when I catch it today, I just dribble. I don't even I'm like coach, my coach hated because he don't want me to over dribble, but I'd like coach, I'm gonna travel. Like, yeah. You know 90% of my game is rip right. You know what I'm saying? And I can't right, do that. Right. So, my post-up game yeah, is struggling for it from it and everything, bro. So I just catch it. Put it down, you got face up, and I hit him with a dribble, and then I make my move because right, otherwise I'm right. travel. Any triple threat, I'm traveling, bro. Any triple That shit threat. was tough for me, fam. That shit was tough. I ain't gonna lie. That shit yeah. was tough right there. Man, that's funny hearing it from somebody else, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, man, that um, shit was crazy. Tell me one thing, uh, one thing I try to help guys with they um in our communities, you know, whenever we see a setback, we all we we kind of go into victim mode a little bit. You feel what I'm saying? So tell me a time something that you something that you failed at that made you, I would say, better as a player, as a person, or whatever. Just something that when, when you faced a hard time, how did you bounce back from that? Man. Like you say, we done faced a lot of hard times coming from where we come from. You know, we come through number of hard times, man. But uh one of the hardest times, man, I ever faced, man, and, and too many people ain't know. Like, I, I had to take a two-year layoff from the, from the hoop, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I had to take a two-year layoff, you know, personal reasons, you know what I'm saying? So I decided to take two years and fall back and not hoop, not knowing how hard how hard it was going to be trying to get back when the nigga was trying to start back hooping. Like, this shit was crazy. So during that two years, bro, I'm just sitting back chilling. Like, 
still in the gym every day, still going hard every day, grinding like real life. But them two years set me back and me trying to get a job and everybody was like, nah, nah, you know, two years, what you been doing, da, 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 da. So everybody really was just turning me down. So now I'm like, damn, what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm saying? What I'm gonna do? But I had a mentality like, man, I'm gonna keep grinding. Somebody gonna give me a shot and I'm gonna pick back up. So two years go by going on my third year, you know what I'm saying? I ended up getting a call. For one, not for the money I wanted, you know what I'm saying? Not for the money I was making before I took the two year break, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up getting a call, bullshit money. I'm like, at the end of the day, I'm like, I gotta go. Cause if I go, I know I'm still good, I'm still in shape. I'm gonna go do what I do and put myself back on that, uh, on that level. So man, I ended up getting a call for bullshit money, going play for bullshit money. Over a year, went right back like that, like it wasn't nothing. So that was about the recent toughest time of my life. That was like two years ago, three years ago. So like I took a two year break and it was just tough getting back. And coming from where I come from, like most guys want to just keep battling and want to keep grinding. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, most yeah. guys would have quit it. Most guys would have gave up. Most guys would have been like, man, I need to go get me a little job. You know, try to make ends meet, da 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 da. I'm like, nah, I'm hooping. I know what I'm going to do. I'm hooping. So I'm going to stay in the gym. I'm going to keep grinding. And that's what I did. So when I got the opportunity to go play in Portugal, that when I took back off, bro. Gotcha. But during them two years, that was the toughest time. I didn't know where I was going, fam. And I, all I know was hoop. Like, I don't know no job. I don't know working no gig or nothing like that. So all I know is bouncing a rock, shooting a rock. Yeah. So I'm like, what I'm going to do now, fam? But during them two years, man, I stayed down, you know, stayed prayed up about it. You know, my family, good family kept me level-headed. And like I said, man, I ended up bouncing back, man. Most guys want to, want to clap back from that. You know how tough it is trying to get back, especially after a two-year layoff. You barely getting back. I've been playing a whole season, boys barely getting gigs right, right now. So after not playing two years, you know how that go. <laughs> Man, I totally understand. So when you took them, uh, when you took them two years off, I think you said something that was very important. You said that you was constantly in the gym, though, almost like you just was st you still was playing. You was preparing I was like I was in the gym literally two years every day. I ain't missing the gym. I'm either in the gym. They catching me running through my neighborhood, running up and down the streets. I'm talking about running blocks. They like every morning, fam. I'm like two years off, I ain't miss a day just grinding. You're gonna see me doing something in the lab. Like I say, running through my neighborhood, you know, just trying to stay right. And that's what I did for two years. And to this day, like the OG, like, man, we remember them days. You know, we go back, we talk about it, you know, chop it up, laugh about it. They be like, man, we remember you running through here, coming through at seven in the morning. You know, we right. sitting out drinking coffee, you come through, you know, striving. You know, running. So yeah, two years, man. I was getting it in because I knew one thing: like, I wanted to hoop, and I knew God was gonna bring it back around and give me the opportunity, and I had to be ready. You know. Right. So, See, that's that yeah, thing that that's that not playing a victim card, man. Because it was like I had the same situation in Turkey. It was like I had just uh, I think I just got cut from the Pacers, and then I went playing the Euro Cup one year, and I was one of the top scorers. I signed a big deal in Turkey, and I got there, and it was just like. I was like, I can't stay here. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I was two countries. It was, it was, it was too different for me. I was like, okay, this is really overseas basketball. So I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm on a big team. This is what my goal. This is gonna get me to the league. I'm like, all right, and I just quit. I went back home, but I didn't really quit. I just like I can't I couldn't live there. But I was in that gym every day, like, like I had a job. And then I was posting on like my YouTube and stuff, and a team from Japan just hit me up from Facebook. And right. give me give me great money and everything. I went over there, you know, I took that team to like the championship and we was good, but it was th during that time when I quit, I was like, I'm not about to just sit down and go look for a job. I'm not about to sit down and just, you know, do my soul rolls and make excuses and blame everybody. I was in the gym, bro, right. night and day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I left my girl, I left my family. <laughs> I was locked in, nah, for real. <laughs> you know I was like, they gonna feel me when I start playing again. But uh, what's your favorite place playing over there? Uh, my favorite place to play it over there, I say Israel, man. Israel? I like Israel, man. Just you know, the Holy Land, just for all different, all different reasons. You know, for one, being the Holy Land, you know, you get to experience that part. You know, all the, all the, all the, all the Christian, like you know, the the, the guy walks the Jesus, the rivers, the ocean, all this, the lakes, everything, just about. It's about uh, Christianity, you know what I'm saying? So that's for number one and number two, like like the weather, man. It's crazy year round, you know what I'm saying? You getting that, you getting that Miami South Beach weather year round right. like that. So that's another thing. Ain't got to worry about no cold like that. And other than that, just hooping, man. Like you say, just balling. 
Gotcha. Yeah, Israel, most definitely, probably my number one as of right now. So from the sounds of it, it sounds like you're a very strong guy in, in, in your faith. How does that, because I try to get, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a Christian at all, but I have Christian mentalities. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I'm you're trying right. to get guys to understand what's that God, that God-like being that helped them get, get over the top. Because I was a Christian for 25 years, and I was that guy that, listen, I couldn't lose because I had God on my side. Now I can't lose because my belief in myself is so strong that my confidence is so high. I'm trying to see how do guys get that God-like confidence to understand, to take them to greatness. What role of God, I got the question I'm asking, what role do God play in your life to keep you going? Well, for me, I, I, I ain't no Christian like that either, bro. I'm just really tapping in over the years, you know what I'm saying? Really just starting to read a little more, really tapping in and really get to knowing like who he is, like on another level, you know? So, uh, like you say, for me, man, just tapping in and, and, and getting to know him, you know what I'm saying? That really took my faith to a whole nother level and really see how he did things throughout throughout the Bible and throughout his stories, you know what I'm saying? And how he did things really just, really just opened my mind up like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, man that died for us, man that gave his son up for us. Like, what more can you want? You know what I'm saying? Like you say, people are making excuses, da 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 Like, man, like, what more can you want, bro? You, you, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I tapped in a little bit more, man. That, that that really, like, raised my faith level just to a whole nother, whole nother level. And then, like you say, then the faith level just went into me. Like, okay, once I picked that up, now I'm just going to tap into another level. Now it's all on me. I'm just going to go. Just like you going with the podcast, you know what I'm saying? But that's how I was been. Like my two years, I just kept that faith, bro. I was just like, man, I ain't quitting. I ain't thinking about getting on another job. I know I'm gonna get back to the hoop game. At some point, I just gotta stay ready. You know what I'm saying? So for two years, I was just grinding, just going every day. You know what I'm saying? Every chance I get, I'm in the gym, I'm going. And like I said, to this day, people remember that. You know what I'm saying? OG, like, man, we remember that. You know what I'm saying? You want hooping and we wondering like, what's going on with the homie? Like he ain't going back, like what's going on? I'm like, man, I'm just going through a little setback, you know what I'm saying? But going through that setback, like my faith is so crazy, bro. Like, that's why I never thought about a job. I never thought about nothing, but I'm gonna get my opportunity and I just gotta be ready. And uh, like I say, man, just tapping into him and he'll really take you to that next level. And with him, like you say, man, you can't lose, fam. Like, how can you lose? And all you gotta do is just tap in, bro, pretty much. Living in Israel. It's a whole nother level. Living in Israel, that's kind of, that's the power of basketball for me. It's like, you get to, it's so much more than just the game. You get to, here we go. We, we got a book in Louisiana. Now we're living in the same place with the stories of that book is coming from. Seeing it from a different perspective. Because you can see it from one perspective, but when you go there, it's a different perspective. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, really, like, for real. Like, like, like you said, coming from where we come from, to go over there and really just, Walk the land, bro, and really like walk the land that walk the ground that he walked. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting to, I'm getting to just just see all the things like from to from the little Mary house where they had the whole setup where they put him on a cross. You know what I'm saying? Where he jumped from mountain to mountain and went, you know, went missing like real life, like it's going on. And I'm seeing it like I'm standing here and seeing it like it's crazy. Like and like I say, um, to this day it still don't make sense. Like that's, this year was my second year in Israel. And it's still like my first time just ever being over there, fam. Like, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? I go to the Dead Sea. You're in the Dead Sea. You know, you're floating in the Dead Sea. You know, across from the Dead Sea. You got the, you got the Jordan City. Like, it's going like what they talk about in the Bible. Like, and I'm standing right here in it, fam. Like, to this day, it just don't make sense. And I can't believe it. Like, it's just unbelievable. So, to be over there hooping and get to tap into that, you can't beat that. I mean, you can't beat it. Right. Let me, uh... It's another big question I always get. How do you train for as like whenever you get in the summer? You know, like uh, Europeans, they don't train in the summer. In America, we get better in the summer. So how do you train for as, do you have a trainer? Do you do everything on your own? Do you do weights? Do you run us through what can for you an elite score? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I don't give a damn what you play. You, you, you want me to get the recipe, huh? <laughs> It, you don't gotta give them all the sauce, but bro, to hear your perspective, bro, it's you know what I'm saying. I just stole a lot of your game. I never even met you till today, but I just stole your game just by looking your name up from previous, <laughs> from knowing who you was in previous season. I just stole a lot of your game. That hezzy, I think that's straight from you. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For so, sure. 
Run it by us, man. Like, how do you train, bro? Like I say, during the summer, man, pretty much I'm all, I'm all by myself, man. I'm a, I'm a, I really believe in self, self motivation, bro. That's that, that's what I, that's what I pump in myself like the hardest. Like, I don't need no trainer. I don't need to be paying no extra money for no trainer to really teach me to do something that I already know how to do, fam. Right. Just to be honest. So during the summer, I don't have no trainer. I'm all out by myself. And most parts, I don't like, I don't like putting everything I do on media. So most times, boys don't even see me grabbing during the summer. But mm-hmm. when the lights come on, I'd be ready. So I really pretty much had that during the summer. Go get in the gym, lock myself in the gym, you know what I'm saying? Work out, hit the iron, you know what I'm saying? To keep myself on that level that I need to be on. But like I say, pretty much in the gym with with guys, I don't even do runs, like open gyms. I don't do no, like I'm really personal, just, it, it's me. I have my wife in a rebounder, wearing her out, fam. Just have yeah. a rebounder, hours. Okay. She going crazy, you yeah. know, but. That's pretty much what I, what I do during the summer. Cause like you say, man, that's that's the time where you where you gotta separate yourself from the other guys. You know what I'm saying? Cause like you said, the American, when we come back, everybody getting it in, everybody grinding, you know what I'm saying, trying to better their game. So for me, I pretty much just go on my own little shell, man, and just get it in, you know, by any means. Like, like I say, self-motivated, bro. What are some things outside of basketball that you're passionate about? Man, outside of basketball, man, I'm really passionate about family. My family, man. Like I love, I love family. I got a son, twelve year old. Crazy about him, vice versa, you know. But um, other than that, man, family. I love family bonding. Love getting with the family. Love taking trips, you know. Get getaways, you know. Getting my little, my little peaceful time to myself. And uh, other than that, man, like I say, um, country boy, man. You know, you know, we like all that. We like all that dirt ride, motorcycles, yeah. dirt bikes, four wheelers. You know, we like we like to get down with it. So. Outside of basketball, I, I, I love to do all of that. Get out there fishing a little bit here and there, but for the yeah. most part, man, I'm in that gym. You know, I'm standing in the country. <laughs> I'm show, locked man. in. I tell them when I go home, they're like, man, it ain't nothing to do. I'm like, boy, you don't sell this greenery? You know? <laughs> you, don't, <laughs> you, don't hear, you don't hear these birds chirping, the mosquitoes. I, I like the mosquito bites. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, straight up. <laughs> something else I try to instill in players, man, is that, you know, multiple streams of income. Is 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 when you playing basketball, you gotta take advantage. We only play this for a couple of years of our life. You know what I'm saying? So I see you got your clothing line on and stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh photo struggle clothing line? Oh yeah, that's what we on, man. The photo T S. You know, that's the uh that's the photo struggle brand that I started two years ago. You know what I'm saying? And uh it pretty much just touch on all aspects of life, man. For the struggle just for any personal struggles in life. I mean, whether it's basketball, whether it's, you know, a uh, relationship, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's shit, trying to keep the bills paid, whatever struggle, you know what I'm saying, you're going through. That, that's what my brand represents, any struggle in life. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you got your personal, your personal struggle, basketball struggle, your own life personal struggles, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what I, uh, that's why I wanted to start the brand, man, to call it for the struggle. It's really just hitting all aspects of a life or just any type of struggle, man, and overcoming them struggles and them obstacles, man, and, and just making it to the top. Gotcha. How, how can we buy them? Where can we find it at the, uh, to, to purchase some stuff? I mean, I mean, right right now, we, we just tapping in and due to the COVID-19, you know, uh, everything's slow. So, so we started trying to get, we started trying to get tapped in all the way, man. And, yeah. uh, but it'll definitely be our shirt. So you can tap in the IG, catch me at uh, Lace Dunn, L-A-C-E, lowercase d. With the number 24, you can tap into the IG. And we'll, and I can keep you updated with the, with the brand on that. I got you, man. Definitely, definitely want to see that that prosper because, you know, when you get that hoop check and you get some checks from when while you're sleeping, it's the best money in the world, bro. Tell you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's what I'm trying to tap into. I'm trying to get it like that, bro. Same, same like you, bro. Like you said, you're hooping. You got the podcast going. You know what I'm saying? I wish y'all the best of luck with that. So. Most definitely trying to get the multiple the multiple incomes coming in by any means. <laughs> gotcha, man. Anything else you want to um to, to lace up on the podcast, man? You touched upon a few things. I mean, other than that, man, uh that's that's pretty much it. Like I say, besides the for the struggle, man, y'all tap into the gift for the struggle. You know, it's coming soon. Uh 4 TS. Anytime y'all see 4 TS, just know that's me. Other than that, man. Like I say, man, uh my pleasure to be on here, man. I wish you all the best of luck with your uh success with the podcast, bro. Tap in with many, many guys as you can, which I know you will, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and that's about it. Other than that, we rocking the, uh, we tapping in with the Unison too, bro. Let me show them the Unison one time. Got the Unison on that. 